So you have a website that contains multiple languages. For instance, .com domain with three languages, English, French, Dutch. Well, the biggest challenge in this situation is, is that you essentially have a multiple websites on a single domain. You want to track the totals, but you also want to be able to analyze the websites separately. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you some recommendations on how you can implement this in GA4. So analyzing your sites will be easy. Let's dive in. Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work with your analytics data. And um, if that's something you're interested in, click the subscribe button, that will make sure you'll get new videos in your feed. So before we start, let's go over what we want to accomplish. Let's say I have a domain, and right now I'm using an, an, a Dutch domain, but let's say we're working from like a single a generic top level domain, so not a country specific. So this is country specific, it's an NL. Uh, but let's say we work from a .com domain. And let's simplify. So we're working from a .com domain and my root language is just English or international. And I want to add two other languages. So let's say on that same domain, I have French and I also have Dutch. So usually your URL structure would look a little bit like this. So for instance, you have a page on the root domain that says about us, but then you also have it in French. So it says slash FR from French. And then we have the same page also in Dutch. So slash NL for the Netherlands. And of course, usually you would translate it. So in Dutch, it would be over ons. Unfortunately, I did not pay much attention when I got French in class, so I don't know what this is in, uh, in French. But you get the point. Uh, you have a language on the root domain, but then you have multiple languages that you can recognize by the first part of your URL. Even better would be to do both language and country. So for French, something like this. For Dutch, something like this. And then if you would add, like for instance, a site for Belgium, you would do it like this. Because we speak the same language, but we use different words. And ideally, you do not want language specific sites, but you want country specific sites. The same goes for a United Kingdom and the United States. Both speak English, but use different words, different ways of, of speaking. And ideally you would make not language specific sites, but you would make country specific sites. You, so you can address your target audience, not only in the right language, but also using the, the, the exact wording that people use in that country. Okay, but we're gonna just keep it simple. So I'm, I'm just gonna go with this. There are a couple of options that you have. You could make different GA4 properties for each language. So that would mean that in GA4, every language would get its own property. But this has an important downside. And that is that you would, for three languages, you would need to have four properties, a property for the root domain, which, which is English. You would need a property for French. You would need a property for Dutch, but you would also need some kind of property to track the total. So every country would get a country specific property, but also like a total, a property that says the total. So you would need four properties. So English, French, Dutch, and one that's, that tracks all of it, which is just more to maintain and to implement. So you would need to implement conversions, your filters, you would need to do that four times. So you could do this, there's nothing wrong with it, but I prefer to track everything in just one property and then you make filtered reports for every language. But you keep the ability to track the total, but you also have the ability to just analyze the country specific sites. So let's go into Google Tag Manager. Here we are on the overview, I'm going into tags. I'm gonna find my GA4 config tag. I've already set up some different things. You can ignore this. This is really not um, what we need for this video. Usually like a basic setup would look like something like this. You have your measurement ID here. And then under user property, we're gonna add a user property and we're gonna set site language. And for our site language, we want the value to be corresponding to uh, English, French, or Dutch, depending on what site the user is on. If somebody's on the Dutch part of the, of the site, it needs to say Dutch. If somebody's on the French part of the site, we want this to say French. Yeah, so um, we can do this manually, but we don't want to do that really because it's really a lot of work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a variable. You can do that by going into the Lego um, icon and then click plus. 
And then we're gonna make a variable that's called site language. And then something that I like to do, I like to preface this with the variable type that we're gonna use. So in this case, I'm gonna use a lookup table. Then under variable configuration, I'm gonna select the regex table. And as input variable, I'm gonna select page path. Because based on the site structure, based on the URL structure, we're gonna tell it what language we're gonna name it. To start, I'm gonna set a default value. And this is the value that I'm gonna use for my root domain. And my root domain is just English. so. My default value is English. And I have two more languages, so I'm gonna add two more rows. One row is for French, and one row is for Dutch. And my URL structure is like this. If my URL starts with FR, the output is French. And if my URL stru structure starts with NL, it's Dutch. Because I've selected the regex table variable type, I can use regex here. And you don't need to know regular expressions to follow along with this tutorial. I'm gonna make two adjustments. First of all, I'm gonna add a roof character or carrot character to the beginning of the pattern. So like this. This means that the page path needs to start with FR or NL. So it cannot be a different location in the URL which makes it just a little bit more safe. And then the second thing that I'm gonna do is every, for every time I'm, I'm using a, a slash character, I'm gonna insert a backslash character. And that's also just good practice within using regex table uh, that you use a backslash in front of every slash that you use. And of course you need to do this for every language that you add. So for instance, if you have German, you do the same. You make a roof character and then you're making a backslash for every slash in the URL and then you say German. And of course, if your site structure looks different, for instance, you use this naming convention, he will do the same thing. You use the caret or roof character, and then you're gonna use a backslash in front of every slash and also in front of the dash sign. So you're basically escaping, that's what it's called, you're basically escaping every special character that you use in your regular expression. Again, I'm gonna keep it simple. It's just three languages, French, Dutch and default on the root do domain is English. And then I'm gonna hit save. So side language will contain the language that somebody is viewing. So this I can save and um, let's uh, preview to see if this is working. So I'm gonna say the root domain. In reality, the root domain is of course Dutch, but I have configured it as uh, English. So there should be, if I go into the J4 config, and I go into the message where it was loaded, I can see exactly what I'm sending when I switch this to values and side language I'm sending English, which is the way I configured it. So by default, this will not stick in J4. J4 doesn't do anything with this. You need to add this field to J4 in order to, to use it in your reports. So that's the second step that we're gonna do. We're going into J4 under admin, and then we need to go in the center column under custom definitions and then custom dimensions. And this is where we're gonna add our uh, site language. So what language has this user viewed our site? In what language? And then the scope, this is important. You need to set this to user. I've tried both in the past and user, I got the most, especially when exporting to Looker Studio, this was the most useful. And then as a user property, I'm gonna select the value that I chose here. So I set the side language here. So I'm gonna set side language here. This is how I set it up. I'm gonna hit save and then side language is available. Um, and it will probably take a while before it ends up in your report. So let's try very quickly if it's already available. So if I'm clicking add filter, side language is here, but it doesn't have any values. So you probably need a little bit of time, maybe a day, two days, or maybe a week, depending on if you have like traffic every day on all of your languages before all the languages show up in this list. But when you have, you'll be able to make filtered reports. And that's really the last step that we're gonna take here. I'm gonna do it right away. I cannot show it with the live data for it because I've just set it up and because I don't have country sites, but I'm gonna show it how you would do it if you would have the data ready. So we're gonna make reports for our three language sites, filtered reports. So the reports that are here by default are for the total amounts of visitors, total amounts of conversions, etc. But now I want country specific reports. And to do that, I'm gonna create a new collection. So I have already collection lifecycle and user and may maybe you have different collections already. But now I'm gonna go under library and I'm gonna add a new collection 
a blank collection that I'm gonna call country sites. And then I'm gonna create a topic for every country. English, apply, I'm gonna create a new topic for French, apply, I'm gonna create a new topic for Dutch, click apply. I'm gonna hit save. The collections are not published by default, so I'm gonna publish it first. And even though I have published, it will not show up in your reports right away because it doesn't contain any reports right now. What we need to do is we need to make filtered reports for every language. And you do that by going into a report that you want to make specific for that country, for instance, your traffic acquisition report. And then I'm just gonna click customize and I'm gonna click add filter. And under add filter, you can say what you want to filter on. In this case, you want to filter by site language. And again, if you have this running on your site for a couple of days, all the site language values will show up here. If you, of course, submitted your changes, that's really important. If you don't submit your changes, the data will not show up in, in GA4. But if you've done that, your languages will show up here. So because I don't have a, it's my site language filled in right now, I'm just gonna pretend that I have it. So you need to imagine this with me. I'm gonna pick a different field, but let's say I've selected site language and the first value is English, the second value is French, and the third value is Dutch. I'm gonna make a filtered report for English. So I'm gonna select English and I'm gonna hit apply. Now I have the traffic acquisition report, but then only for the visitors that are on the English site. So I'm gonna hit save, and this is really important. I'm not gonna save the changes to the current report because I want to keep that to monitor the total amount of visitors across all languages. But I want to save this as a new report. Let's name it English traffic sources. Let's go save. And you would do this for every report that you want to filter down and save. For instance, if you want to make a content report for just that site, you do the same thing. You go under engagement pages and screens, then you would do exactly the same thing. Customize report, add a filter, filter by site language, and then select the, the language that you want to filter it on. So you make a couple of reports for every language and you also repeat that for every language. So I just made my first report for English, but I want to copy the same report over to Dutch. And the way you do that is exactly the same as what I just showed you. So I'm gonna go back. If you've all your reports ready and you want to add them to your collection, you go under library and then I have my country sites collection i'm gonna say edit collection and then under search reports i'm gonna search in detail reports english traffic sources and then i'm gonna drop it here english traffic sources save to current collection i do not need a new one and then i'm going back and this will show the country sites and here it shows English only because that's the only topic that, that contains a report right now. And then under English, I've added my traffic sources report and then I go, go there and I see it's pre-filtered already to the language that I want. And again, I do not have side language, so I, I chose a different field. But you, you need to imagine here that it says uh, side language equals English. So now I have a traffic source report for my English site only. You do this with every report that you want to filter down and save, and then you do that process with every language that you have on your site. So that's it for today. I hope this video was clear, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Uh, also, if you've liked this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to get more videos by me. Also, if you enjoy the setup videos, I have a dedicated playlist on how you set up GA4. You can find it in the video description. All right, have a nice day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.